started, so um, yeah, I'm not going to introduce myself again. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be talking about Cloud Build, uh, but I'm going to make the assumption that most of you might have known uh, what is CI CD. So just to go through very quickly, essentially CI CD, the term is continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. Uh, ideally, it's uh, automation of pipeline between your development phase to your deployment phase. So delivery itself uh, would be just to the point of before you deploy the code, you just build all the required assets. Uh, but for deployment, continuous deployment, you're actually looking at once you de uh, integrate or once you commit some code, you want a pipeline to build automatically and immediately you know, run through your tests, build your assets and deploy the application to your production environment. So that's the difference. And why is this uh, something that's important to my talk today? So it's related to Cloud Build. So Cloud Build, just to explain what it is, so it's a very good tool in GCP's ecosystem for building a CI CD pipeline. And how you use it? So within GCP, they have this tool called the Cloud Source Repository. Think of it as uh, similar to your code source uh, revision control like uh, GitHub or Bitbucket. So what happens is that you, when code changes on a certain branch uh, it in, in this repository, it will trigger an event to start the pipeline, to start building or deployment. Uh, but if you are looking at using this tool and you are already on uh, repositories like uh, systems like GitHub or Bitbucket, don't worry about it. Through GCP, you can uh, trigger a process to mirror your repository into GCP. So changes on GitHub, for example, will also trigger these uh, automated pipelines in GCP through Cloud Build. Okay, and one important thing, because it's a CI/CD pipeline, you want to be able to run certain tasks in parallel. For example, may maybe you have different types of tests, unit tests, integration tests. You want to run them in parallel because uh, this type of, this tests are independent of each other, but you need them to complete before you deploy your application, and you want them to complete as fast as possible. So you can run some tests or, or some stages in your pipeline in parallel, as well as in series if they have dependencies on each other. Okay, so. Uh, I want to talk a bit about Vicky's uh, beginnings with CI/CD. So we have uh, transferred or moved most of our workflow over to Cloud Build over the last year. Uh, but I also want to introduce what we used before then to give you a better understanding on uh, or better appreciation on why we moved over. Okay, so once upon a time, so we hosted our own uh, CI/CD tools. Essentially, we, uh, for example, we cloned some open source uh, tool like Drone, uh, host it on a VM. And basically, that's our entire setup for CI/CD pipelines. Okay, and one of the big problems here was that uh, because we didn't have dedicated resources, engineers to work on improving the systems to make it uh, to integrate the scalable plugins with that those systems. So when we use it, it wasn't scalable. You know, essentially, all the workflows go to one single VM alone. Uh, if all your engineers are using it at once, it's actually very slow. And because we don't have dedicated resources, sometimes the system breaks down. Uh, essentially, people started doing this. So I grabbed this from our old chat logs. So they started about uh, talking about restarting drone. Uh, channel, I'm going to restart drone now. Waiting for a quiet period to restart drone. Drone is having some disk space issue fixing. Okay, Team, uh, drone keeps on failing, but after restarting, it works. And then finally, the combination of all the frustration, who's in charge of drone? <laughs> so yeah, the, I, I just want to mention that I'm not trying to say drone is bad, but the idea here being that self-hosting these tools, but not having a developers to maintain or make it better is actually quite bad over time. So people started talking about moving over to GCP since we were already on their platform. And that's what moved us over in the first place. So we have, uh, so this is the first commit I made in regards to integrating Cloud Build. This is one year ago, October 20, 2018. So at this point, essentially, we didn't have any repositories, no builds triggered over here in GCP, as well as no uh, zero build minutes so far. So let's see, one year later, what we have, what are the milestones we have achieved? Okay, so today, this is something I checked on Wednesday. So we have 77 repositories that are working on uh, Cloud Build. Okay, and Unfortunately, I'm not able to get the exact number for the total pipelines that were triggered. Uh, so builds, I was only able to go until 20,000. I think before that, they couldn't get, let me go behind anymore. So, uh, but this is somewhere in November 2018. So I'll say somewhere around 21,000, 22,000. And in total, we've, uh, in this one year, we have used up 87,000 build minutes. So this is across three different machine types, uh, 32 core machines, eight core machines, and uh, single core machines. 
for all our CI/CD workflows. Okay, so all this might seem like okay, yeah, they're numbers, but it, it may not make any sense right now. But bear with me; I will explain a bit on how this is beneficial, you know, in terms of comparing between managed and self-hosted. Okay, so through that, I'm I'm gonna uh, first talk into what did we do right uh, in terms of uh, moving over the cloud build, and yeah, one of the things. So moving the cloud build was the right decision. It's kind of the like I'm I'm trying to like, be like a salesman to sell this to you, uh, but the. Just to emphasize on what I mean here, okay, so let's do some comparison to understand you know, why moving over the cloud build was a good decision. So let's compare between managed and self-hosted. So for managed, earlier on, I've mentioned that we have a cumulative total of 87,000 build minutes across different machine types. So let's say if I were to compare this to, if I'm self-hosting my own solution, I uh, spin up a 32 core VM. That would essentially mean that the parity here is that I need to keep that VM up for an entire year. Okay, and essentially that translates to over 500,000 minutes. So you can see over here immediately, there's already some uh, disparity. You know, the, if I'm using a managed CI-CD uh, tool, I'm actually using it for a lot lesser time as compared to hosted because you need to switch it on 24-7. You can't switch it off at night. You know, maybe you have engineers who are working at night as well. Um, but actually this doesn't really explain about expenditure. You know, for managed tools, you're not just paying for the infrastructure uh, that is, it runs on. You're also paying, let's say Google in this case, for their engineers to maintain these tools or make it even better across time. So let's try and see if we can do a better estimation at that. Okay, so what I have over here on the left and right side, on the left side is basically the documentation for cloud build. Uh, essentially, it's referring to three different uh, build machines uh, and the build minutes, uh, cost per build minute, okay? On the right side, what I have is the hosted solution. So one single 32 core VM. The assumption I'm making here is that instead of trying to you know, sort of compare it uh, machine to machine where I set up uh, a single core machine, an eight core machine, and a 32 core machine, I'm just going to uh, make the assumption that all these workflows can be all done on a 32 core machine as well. Okay? So let's try and compare the cost from here. Okay? So based on the uh, figures that I'm given here and the build minutes I showed you earlier on, essentially the figure I'll get to is three thousand uh, dollars in USD okay but what about hosting uh, a 32 core VM for one year so I even set up uh, with some discounts uh, I think with dedicated uh, usage of up to one year and even with the discounts it's still six thousand dollars and this already gives us a uh, reduced expenditure of uh, over 50 percent by half and I just want to mention one more thing I'm not even factoring maintenance costs for self-hosted solutions you know, this is a problem. If you're hosting it yourself, you need your engineers to, you know, like I mentioned earlier on, go in, check the system, restart the system. You know, you are using their time. This is all intrinsic cost that can build up across time. Okay, so this is one of the huge benefits that we've seen so far. Okay, another benefit between managed and hosted is that previously, you know, all our uh, build workflows ran only in series. You couldn't do stages in parallel. Okay, and essentially all of them are running on one single VM. But in manage, essentially every single build, you know, run on their own dedicated resource. So if we compare the build minutes again, of course for manage, I had a figure of 87,000 minutes, but because of the deficiencies in the hosted environment, essentially what we can expect is that we will definitely go beyond 87 minutes. And therefore, I mean, we can make, a, some, make the conclusion here that the, through the manage uh, CICD tooling for cloud build, we are able to achieve faster build times. Okay, so beyond the benefits that we observe in regards to adopting Cloud Build, uh, I also want to talk about other stuff that the Viki has done right in terms of moving over to Cloud Build. Okay, so uh, one of the uh, points that I have over here is harnessing the ecosystem of GCP. So not just using Cloud Build as a tool, uh, but also using other tools that they have in the platform, like IAM, which is Identity and Access Management. So how you do this, essentially there's a console in GCP where you can look for the Cloud Build service account and you can assign privileges to it. And this is beneficial to us because if you're using a uh, third-party system, some uh, self-hosted CI, let's say you want this uh, pipeline to be able to push some files. For example, if you're a web application, you need to build JavaScript assets, CSS assets, you need to push it to some bucket somewhere. Then you need to, because this uh, bucket most likely is on a different tool, it's not, uh, it doesn't have any integration with your CI tooling. You need to put maybe integrate or embed some form of uh, secrets into the machine itself. 
But in the case of GCP with IAM, all you need to do is assign the privileges to the service account and that's it. There's no requirement for you to copy and paste some secret or move some files over to the system. It works like magic. Okay, and there's also one other good point which is the ease of being able to review very easily. All you need to do is just go to IAM console and you can see what my service account can and cannot do. So if one day you need to restrict some privileges from your service account, all you need to do is just remove those privileges. Okay, another thing that we felt that we did right was centralizing our knowledge. So this is not so much about uh, a benefit that comes from cloud build or GCP in general, but rather the change of mindset within the company. So back then in our self-hosted CI systems or CI/CD workflows, uh, each of the teams were in charge in making sure that their workflows work properly. So they built their own custom steps, uh, custom builders for getting some certain tasks done. But if you look at it as a whole, there's some repeated functionality you know, across these different teams. So when we were looking at moving over the cloud build, we were thinking, why not centralize all our knowledge and implementation so that there's no tribal knowledge being formed uh, around the company, okay? So essentially just getting a single platform, like if you are doing it, uh, if you are coding your Docker files for your custom build steps in GitHub, you can just put all your knowledge there, uh, put the documentation there as well, okay? And benefit, yeah, reduce reinventing the wheel. You just want to do it once if one year later, someone wants to do the same functionality, they can just read the same uh, document that you have already created before. Okay, and one of the last things that we felt that we did right was uh, implementing notifications. So what's CI/CD tooling without notifications? You know, you can't have your engineers keep refreshing the cloud build history page, you know, just to see if your builds pass or fail. You want to have some automation, like maybe they'll send you a Slack notification or they'll update your GitHub status for your PRs, to let you know if something passed or failed, okay? So implementation of that is very simple. Uh, at the end of every single cloud build process, you have a pub sub topic and the information will be published to that topic, okay? So what you need to do, create a cloud function, subscribe to that topic, and then get the information to cause GitHub status API or Slack notifications, you know, do whatever you want in there. It's essentially cloud functions, uh, it's code that you can write yourself. Okay, so as mentioned, GitHub status, Slack notifications, it's possible to do it here. Okay, so uh, exciting stuff. But the thing is, uh, presentation won't be interesting if I just tell you about successful stuff. Also, we need to discuss about what went wrong as well. Uh, but also we fixed it you know, across time. So let's see. Okay, one of the issues that uh, we face, uh, so earlier on I talked about a centralized documentation and implementation and the platform for that. And one of the other decisions we made at the start was, you know, why not for all these images for custom builder steps inside your uh, workflows, you know, push it inside one single image repository. And then for each of your applications, the resultant Docker image, push it into the same repository as well. And this was a problem because people were getting confused. You know, sometimes the naming of the application Docker images uh, sound very similar to those that were used for the uh, custom build stages. So uh, we decided, why not just de decouple it across time? You know, if, I have, uh, if I'm using a GCP project for running all my build pipelines, I'll just put all these dependent images into the container registry for that GCP project. If I'm gonna use this image, or rather use the pipeline to deploy to a Kubernetes cluster from a different project, I'll push the resultant Docker image to that different project instead. So it's clear decoupling, you can see very clearly, or rather when you locate the image, you know that it's supposed to be deployed within that project itself. Okay, and one other issue that we faced over here was huge uh, regex value. So this was kind of an issue because we started to use uh, Cloud Build at the point where it was still in beta. They didn't have this thing called negative lookaheads in regex. So uh, problem, uh, just let you guys judge for yourself. Essentially, uh, I'm not sure if you all have worked with regex before, but this is a very long regex string. Uh, essentially what it's trying to do is just this thing on the right side. It's just trying to not match certain values. So it's a good thing that uh, cloud, uh, GCP, they rolled out this invert regex button uh, or checkbox to allow us to be able to you know, implement this negative logic more easy, uh, much more easily. But what I'm trying to do here is essentially match uh, a certain few uh, lines. You know, this is for matching your code branches. And I'm just trying to say, uh, if this branches, the code changes, 
don't trigger the pipeline. So it's sort of a negative logic. And in this case over here, essentially it's just uh, the regex is trying to match everything but those two uh, strings. So yeah, it's crazy stuff. Okay, so uh, before I end, I just want to talk about a bit of uh, extra stuff that we did uh, to make our workflows a lot better. So one of the issues is that uh, when you're using Cloud Build, you need to implement some configuration and most often it's in a YAML file. So earlier on, I talked about Cloud Build, you can run stages in parallel. Uh, but the thing is this, if you look at the YAML file, essentially everything is like, it's kind of like an array or a list. You read it from top to bottom. So let's say someone ch make a change in your YAML file. How do you, or as a reviewer of the code, how do you know, you know what are the changes in there? It's not easy to tell by just reading this configuration. So within our company, we had a person, uh, one of our engineers who had this idea. Why not? read this YAML file and transform it into an image. So it's much more easy. You can see on the right side, you compare it to this left side, it's, that's definitely much more easy to see like what's the pipeline trying to achieve over here. Okay, so, so before I end off as in, this is basically that library that's linked to, it's a, basically a, a, a gem uh, you can run on your CLI and it will transform uh, input to a YAML file into that image that you saw earlier on. So, and with that, we have reached the end. Thank you.